City Point, it's Pastor Mike. Good to be with you again today. Been a while since I sent a video out through the email. I've been doing some live Facebook uh, feeds, which I enjoy Tuesdays with Mike. So if you're on Facebook or around it on Tuesdays, you m might want to just check that in. Um, I just give a few minutes of a word of encouragement want to encourage people. I feel like that's part of my purpose is to to encourage people, to to support people, to give them hope. Um, that, after all, that's what the gospel is. It's a message of hope. It's good news. <laughs> it's good news. The gospel, good news. I got no bad news for you. The good news is God is in a good mood and he has done great things to provide for you and your salvation, your deliverance, your freedom. And it all begins with just knowing God. You know, that's part of the four cups that we we focus on here, knowing God. You know, there's nothing nothing that can surpass knowing God. And then as you know God, what you do is you you find freedom. Because we all come to God with junk. We all come to God with certain things wrapped around our lives. And it, it, the, the more you get closer, the more you draw into the heart of God, the more God's going to free you. There's things we all carry that God is looking to get us freed up from. Hang-ups, bad, bad thoughts, bad belief systems, bad ideas, things that have been burned into you, you know, like from a young child, the idea, you know, that um, maybe you were told you were an under underachiever or maybe in layman's terms that you were dumb, you know, and that you just, you didn't have what it takes to be a good student. And so you've kind of viewed yourself through that, through that belief that you took in to your mind that well, I'm not a good learner. I'm not a good student. I don't like to read. I, I can't tell you how many men I've heard tell me, well, you know, I just don't like to read. And, and I don't really think that's true. I think usually if you think back, it goes back to when you were asked to read in school and, and pretty much shamed if you were maybe a little behind the class. And, and, it was, and, and what happens is in your mind, you, you, you decide you hate reading because of, of uh, shame or, or just embarrassment. And then you, you buy into that, and, and what you do is you build a belief system around a false notion that I hate to read. You know, and, and it's not true because books are amazing. Books are like windows into whole nother worlds, and, and it doesn't matter how fast you read. It's, this isn't a race to who can read the book the fastest. You know, the Bible isn't a book that you read, and, 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 and we do it as a contest to see who can read it the most and read it the fastest and, and all of that. It's, it's, it's the truth that... And the, and the reality of what you read is it takes you to places that God has for you. So, you know, you got to shake those things off. There's a lot of things like that that we've believed. We get even religious notions. You know, people misbehave as children and your parents tell you, don't do that. God doesn't like that. And if you do that, God will get you, you know, and, and kids grow up with that idea, you know, that mindset of God is just looking out and waiting for me to mess up so he can get me. And, and that's just a wrong concept of a good God, a good, good God who, who loves us and who's not, who, he's not trying to get us. He's, he just wants to bless us. He wants to bestow goodness on us and mercy. And these are all kind of the negative things that, you know, that can attach themselves to us. And, and after all, too, we live in Northwest Indiana. I mean, you know, cynicism is like, a fruit of the spirit around Northwest Indiana, sarcasm, you know, negative attitudes. I mean, you know, we've, we're, we're some of the best in the country at sarcasm and, and criticisms and all these isms, you know, schisms and, and, and prisons, because that's what they become. They become prisons of, uh, of your soul where you're captivated by negativity. And so we're, we're launching March 1st, uh, something that I did last year uh, through the ministry of Igniting Hope Ministries, uh, which is led by Steve Backland, who is a senior leader at Bethel in Reading. And uh, I, I, Steve was in the area last year 
a little over a year ago, I met him and and uh, got introduced to him, and he was such an encouragement. He was such a, a blessing as he spoke into my life, and and then uh, I went on this 40-day negativity fast with him, and I got what it is that you sign up. It's there's th- there's several different levels, and you know, but the the main level is free, and you'll get a daily email that'll give you just a good word of encouragement. Sometimes it has a video with it. Sometimes they're just declarations uh, of the word of God to get you believing, confessing, and in agreement with what God says, what God says about you. Shedding off our negative belief systems, our negative ideas and things that have attached themselves to us. And so daily you'll get these emails. And and then I for those who sign up to go along with me, I'm going to put together the group from City Point that go along with this, which, you know, we'll, we will get the daily emails, but then I will send out emails and things in addition to all that to really help encourage you. I want to see your agreement with negativity broken off your life, because if you get your belief systems in line with God and God's word, which is called faith, because faith is the ability to believe what God says in spite of the, 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 the facts. You know, the fact could be saying one thing, but the truth of God says something entirely different. The fact is when the children of Israel came against uh, Jericho, the city was a great walled city. But the truth was God said, I have given you this city. And, and so the fact was that This wall was so great, the wall was so wide that three chariots could go side by side around the city. It was such a fortified city that it would take God to do it. And, And yet all God asked them to do was to be obedient. And so every day for six days, they marched around the wall. And then on the seventh day, they marched around 17, seven times. And then they let out a shout and the wall came down. And see, I'm believing that for you in your life, that the walls in your life, the things that have kept you contained, the things that have stopped you from getting where you need to be and get what you need to be and and, and what God has for you to be in the word of God, I'm praying those walls come down. And they're not just going to uh, happen, you know, by happenstance, they're going to come out of obedience to God. We're going to have to march around these walls. You got to walk around those things and you got to speak to them. You know, you got to speak to the walls in your life. You got to speak the word of God over your circumstances. You got to quit getting in agreement with the negativity and all the things that people say and people have convinced you that are true. And you got to say what God says and what God says is true. And as you begin to get in agreement with God, if any two of you shall agree, it shall be done. The walls are coming down. Everything that's hindered you and stopped you from being and doing what God has called you to be and called you to do is coming down in the name of Jesus. We're going to see a move of God so powerful, so life-changing, so city reviving that what happens in you is going to break out. And when you break out, others are going to break out because they're going to say, wow, I want some of that. I want to get out of my walls. Can you tell me how you did it? And you're going to show them how you marched around the opposition and you obeyed God and God showed up because God has promised that you are more than a conqueror. You are more than equal to any opposition, that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world, that the power of God resides in you and that there's no promise that's going to fall to the earth, but God is going to do everything that he said he would do and he will perform it because God says, my word will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing whereunto I sent it. Man, I'm preaching now. Hallelujah. And you see what God is trying to do is break this negativity off of us because as a man believes, so is he. And these negative belief systems are why we're sitting in the captivity that we're sitting in. And what we're going to do is break our agreement with this captivity. We're going to feast on what God says, feast on the positive, feast on faith. And when faith comes alive, your vision will be fulfilled because God will show you that faith is is the ability to see what the eye cannot see or has not seen. But by faith, we call it into existence and we see the word of God come true. So I want you to click on this link, read this email, enjoy this. And I believe God's going to use it for his glory, for his honor, 
And in Christ Jesus, he's going to make a difference for you. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.